Anyway, I'll tell you a little bit about me. I'm Mike, uh, Mike Brown. I'm a horticulturist. I um, got lassoed into doing a little design today because it's the holidays and it's, you know, I figured we could come up with an idea to, to work with succulents and talk about succulents and also figure out maybe how we could maybe incorporate those into table design or mantelpiece or just something that you may want to have, you know, in your indoors, but these have to have sunlight. So this would be a temporary, obviously temporary setting. Um, and then I'll tell you a little bit about these succulents, how to care for them. And um, basically, um, what I've done is I, cre I had this class a couple years ago, and it's called From the Garden to the Table, because it was a friend of mine called me at the 11th hour and says, I'm having 20 people over, I need a table design for Thanksgiving. And I'm like, and you knew this like weeks ahead of time, and that party's in like three hours. So I went over to his house, and I went through his whole backyard, and I'm like, because th there was no budget, he just says, go pick stuff out of the yard and, and make it pretty. And I'm like, okay, fine. So. I went through his yard and I found things like um, pittosporum, um, which is an evergreen plant. I found some old pieces of driftwood. I found some rocks and boulders. And then I found all these things that were blooming. And then I just cut and pasted pretty much and just made this big table arrangement. Bird of paradise. Everything was fair game in his yard. So when he came out, the table looked great, but his backyard was definitely <laughs> sheer. There was a lot, of, a lot of green spaces missing because I went overboard, but it looked fabulous. So today, I'm going to do that with succulents, and this is stuff that came out of my backyard today. And those are figs falling. I would use figs, but they're probably dried, and you won't really see them as a design. So the leaves and that stuff you fall here hitting the roof is from that big fig tree back there. So um, we're going to talk about succulents. So we'll do a little design. We'll talk about succulents and um, how you could you know, just get creative and find stuff in your own garden. And if not, you know, sometimes you can, you know, pick up these sayings and Michaels and stuff like that and, and create as well. So, um, center point is I found this um, pot here and what I use today, but I also wanted to do something kind of rustic, so I, I found this burlap uh, cloth. I think it kind of goes with the design. Those are the figs falling, so don't, don't freak out if you're just wondering what the heck is falling on our heads. Welcome. <laughs> So I found this uh, burlap, and we're going to use that as a centerpiece. And this is a cool pot. Um, I like this design. It's kind of going to kind of look like a desert southwestern landscape with a little bit of evergreen. So who knows how it's going to come out? I didn't really give myself a, um, a a fair run on it, but I think we can be confident enough to think that it will probably look good. So that, without being said uh, any further, I have some pieces of wood laying around my garden and I thought hey maybe we could do something like this on a table now this would be a centerpiece table this would probably not be somewhere uh, if you're gonna set it obviously you need a wider table but I'm just gonna show you things that you can use and ideas that you can come up with and like I said I'm just now working with this so I don't know how I'm gonna incorporate this but we'll make a great buffet table. absolutely buffet or hors d'oeuvre table yeah. cocktail Great's table um, things of that sort. So let's look at it as a buffet table. We'll do a big sliced ham there. <laughs> or a pork loin. Let's see. I don't know. I'm going to get real crazy. I like to be creative and out of control. So let's just see where I end up. Um, these are old pieces of wood that were in the garden. And I just didn't want to throw them out because I used them during a Halloween. I had a big Halloween party in my house. And I used all these dry pieces of logs and I lit them from underneath and put these scary things in them. Scared the kids, I loved it. So it was really fun. So I'm gonna have to step here. Alright, well let's let's try that. Let's, let's that Sound like they were in a hurry. Um it might be a bit much, but let's just see where we go with that, okay? Alright, well I I found some really cool succulents. And in this centerpiece here, it's really important to have a focus point. So I found this really cool euphorbia here that I want to put there, because it kind of looks holiday-ish, but the trick is to see how it's going to fit in there. So again, I'm going to have to figure this out. Um, I like this one too because it has a little character to it. It's got some old age to it, kind of like me, character and old age. Um, there. So let's just start with that. If you don't have gravel or paper, I mean gravel or rocks, Newspaper works great. Besides, you're, you're under a time schedule. You have 20 minutes to set this whole table. <laughs> They're coming at the door in about 20 minutes, so you got to get ready. So anyway, I'm going to use newspaper. It works better. But I have gravel, too. So 
plastic bags look? Plastic bags, garbage bags, <laughs> dirt. No one's got to see the dirt um, in there. So let's try these succulents like this. And that's a pretty cool kind of this is, I do not, have never seen this succulent before. Um, it's a hanging plant succulent. It's called curly lips. lily. Lips. Curly lips. That's the nickname. And it has, it's like the lipstick plant. It has a little bit, is this red or pink? Do you know the color on this one? I think it's red. Red. Most of them are red. So um, they do not like sun at all. So I would give them as much shade as possible. Air circulation is really important. Um, hanging in the garden underneath the shade tree is perfect. They do like to be fed occasionally, so maybe use some um, miracle Grow liquid fertilizer. When you're watering, you just water those probably once a month to be fine. Um, and then when they start to die back, you can deadhead pinch back if you want. I would think that at some point, this would definitely need to be put into a bigger hanging basket so that uh, you don't have to worry about it getting root bound. Right now, they're pretty, pretty new in here, so you don't have to worry about that now. But I'm going to use these because they kind of fills in. They're fluffy, that's a key. Yeah, it's sort of, and I think this might be hiding my pot here. Let me see. Let's move this around here again. Will you hold this? I'm just kidding. <laughs> sure, and I'll eat hey, you. Oh, great. Abusive student. We already have one that was going to be disruptive, so why not? Throw, uh, hit why not this? abuse too? Right? Exactly. Um, let's see. This is like a big hook, you know, I like that. You, get over here. Okay, there we go. I don't, I don't want to hide the pot. All right. These are very cool and very holiday-ish. So I thought it would be kind of fun. I'll sort of tuck one in here. This is a uh, Echeveria. These get fairly large. But the nice thing about them is that you can move things around like that. Come up with a little monochromatic design. And Martha Stewart would love it, I'm sure. <laughs> Actually, her, her nephew, no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, so the edge of areas, um, they look good in rock gardens. They're not a very tall plant. Uh, this particular hybrid is um, not the Aeonium that might, be con might confuse it with. The Aeoniums have a tendency to get tall and kind of leggy after they bloom. So, let's continue with that. Fun, a little middle, middle filler. The fun part hasn't started yet. We get to eat. <laughs> Where's that hand? It's behind you. I, the the ham is right here. The ham. <laughs> <laughs> the ham. Love it. Um, okay, you don't put any on the slot here. I kind of like. Alright, I'm going to come back to that. Trust me, I'll have it all together. But if you don't have evergreen conifers in your yard, and you're lucky enough to have pittosporums, which are great. These make really great cuttings like that. Um, the uh, chef Lyras are the same way. Chef Lyras, this is a different type of pittosporum. There's many types. Uh, there's the um, uh, chef Lyras look very similar to this in the leaf. It's a, kind of a palmate leaf. And then I'm just going to try and, and soften this up. What I did was I just cut them sharp because the, the, the hedge needed to be trimmed anyway. So I got two things done at once. I can create this and trim my head at the same time. So, let's do that. Back it up there. It might be a bit much. I'm going to hide that again. Um, so you could do a pine magnolia is perfect. Those ugly magnolia leaves that fall in your yard. The green ones are like, oh my god, I can make a wreath out of this. I'm not going to make a wreath. It's a lot of work. but. You could certainly use that to make a wreath with. Um, and I, do, I did not bring with me today, but generally, uh, the last time I had these big candelabras, which were really beautiful, some really kind of rustic candelabras. And then you can use, you know, choose your color scheme on your candles, either green or gold would be nice. Uh, depends on what your theme is. I'm going to put this over here. And yeah, I just pick just enough of these. Let's see. I'm not singing. Sorry. Yeah. So now the termites. Right. The 
fact that I'm doing this in front of you is like, okay, because I would be sitting here at home like 25 minutes just figuring out where this is going to go. Um, you can do that right there. You can also take this and wire this onto these logs too, and limbs as well. So if you had something that was a little more upright, you could take this and just wire it on there. And hopefully no one's going to see your wire. So it's going to go like that. we got room for our plants here. Some Martha Stewart. Oh, that's looking better. Yeah, okay. You guys need the trim, the fig tree trim? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we'll because I'm going to go back. That's it, folks. I have no more. You want to go pick some for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can do that. Um, bird of Paradise. Everything. I've used Bird of Paradise before. Leaves. Leaves are great. Philodendrons. All of your tropical plants. Philodendrons, Siloans, um, the Xanadu Philodendron, the Bird of Paradise leaves look great in a big vase. Vase, vase. And then you can use them on the table as well there. So, um, I also did this this morning out of my yard. Picked some really fresh tangerines. They are from my yard. See, there's no sun kissed on them really. They're so good. And then we just figure out where we want to place those. Maybe let's do something like this here. Isn't that in groups of threes? It's so, so traditional there. Uh -huh. <laughs> three of that, three of that. So I always do things in threes, really, because it looks more natural when you do that. Um, don't ask me why, I just think it's a visual thing. So let's do something like this. Plastic accessory. Right? <laughs> and you three. guys, you can take one of these home with you. They are so, they came from my yard, they are the best tangerine, so make sure you get one. The lemons or eurekas are very sour, so if you like lemons, you can have one of those too. But you'll love the tangerines, these are awesome. Pretty colors. Yeah, let's do a group of five over here. Another odd number. There. Catch. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm always ready. Run. So I did not rehearse this, I, I, I promise. No need. No need, right? No need to promise. <laughs> You're going to say stuff like that. Actually, I'm going to get back at it. Yeah, exactly. We can go to the back of the room. Oh, yes. Okay, that's right. the first time. <laughs> to, to the back of the room. Yes, yeah, it's a disruptive one. Yeah, it's you. You can see that already. Okay, so. Let's just do that. Looking okay, huh? Mm -hmm. You guys think? Yeah, maybe? Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> okay. Let's just do three. Three. Let's go back in there. All right. And we haven't even gotten to the succulents yet. Um, if you wanted to uh, use rocks, I just brought these as an example. You can do rocks. And, and you can actually, what you could do is when you have your tablecloth or whatever you're using, you can line the whole center with rocks. Ooh, and then you can tuck your plants inside the rocks. So you make a mound of gravel or a mound of rocks, and then you don't see the container of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rely on hopefully the pittosporum. You may not see that so well though, but we might be able to kind of fudge it like this. These little, um, Halweas is what these are called. And they definitely do not like to be overwatered, so they like it a little bit on the dry side. Let's see if I can. What's that? They're welcome in my world. Yeah, these you definitely don't want to overwater. And they don't mind being root bound either, so they can stay in pots for a little bit longer than most plant plants can. They don't really have much of a root base. white. Um, 
right, let's put that there. And we could also do a little trim. <laughs> so much to the ham. Right? Where's the ham? <laughs> um, you know what I need is a flat container. Just a small, you know what, that's okay. I'm going to use this one here. There's cheap ones over there. The cheap one? I want the expensive ones. <laughs> Where'd you see a cheap one? I don't know. Okay, hold on. They're all over the place. Talk some money to yourself. I'll be right back. <laughs> bringing the ham out. I have one from 
Yosemite, too, I don't know. And then these came from my yard. That, I used uh, rose stems and uh, wire that you could stick into, I don't know, let's try that. Something like that, maybe. <clears throat> we do need to hide that soil back here, right? It's looking kind of... Three again is a magic number, let's see. Right. So raisins in the matzo ball soup. Now we're going to throw in. <laughs> so if you really wanted to be more traditional holiday, I suppose you could do maybe one of those with your citrus. Let's do this. Kitty. Kitty. Throw a cat in. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Put the cat in. <laughs> Stay. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Do not want to see this. So, oh good, we have, I don't know, does red make it off on this table? Probably. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's actually not, it's not a bad red. It's kind of more of an orange, actually. Yeah. could be something that you could do in a mantelpiece really easily um, and all of these succulents could be used indoors for several weeks before you need to take them back outdoors to where they get full sun so if it's going to be during the holidays you want to do something on your mantelpiece this is just an idea uh, when you're watering these I suggest that you probably take them outside or over a sink to water them you want to water them thoroughly and then be done with it for a good month you don't have to water these but maybe once a month um, you don't want to overwater it. You want to make sure you have drainage holes in them. If you're leaving them in here, you obviously have drainage holes, but on this, there is no drainage hole, so you might want to water this separately and then put it back in here. Um, on larger plants like this, you can take them and you can just, if you had a bucket of water, you can just let them sit in the bucket and let them soak up the water. A lot of times that's more important because what happens is um, if you've just fertilized recently and you're watering, then you're pushing all the fertilizer out. If the plant is able to sit in the water, it soaks it up, and all the nutrients stay in the plant instead of draining out. So it's more like a sponge. So, and this is also a fire stick. If you're using this around pets and kids, just be careful, and especially if you're clumsy like me, be careful. You just don't want to get poked in the eye with this. Uh, not only would it hurt, but it has a white milky sap in it that poinsettias have. It's also toxic, so poinsettia sap Euphorbias, ficus, the fig tree above our head, um, all of those have that white milky sap that people are allergic to. I am, if I get it on my skin, I break out. In fact, I still have some right there. It was like poison ivy. What about the plumerias? Plumerias, to my knowledge, not so. I don't. They have that. They have the sap, but I, I don't know. But you know what? If it's white milky latex sap, careful. Stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Wear glasses, goggles. Don't get it in your eyes. So what would happen? Um, most animals know about plants, but you know, if you get, if it, you break it off and get in your eye, it can cause blindness. The worst case scenario, it can cause blindness. Or you can, you would need to get to the, to the doctor immediately. Rinse out your eyes quickly and seek medical attention on all of these. So just know that, you know, I, yeah, I just try to be aware of that. But anyway, that being said, on a downer note there, um, <laughs> All these other aeoniums and the hanging plants we talked about are perfect ideas for the holidays. This is a really cool plant here. This is a really great xerosic. And, uh, and basically what happens in all succulents is they keep their water in the, in the leaves. So the roots are very fine. They're very, just micro, almost microscopic little uh, capillary roots. So when you overwater those, they, they're, they're not going to be able to take up any more water than they need, so the plant stores water in the leaves. Uh, much like this aloe here does as well. You can feel this in here, the, the texture, the, the density of that. These plants don't have a huge root base. 
Because in their environment, what happens is that we get a big flash flood, it rains really quickly, and it's gone, kind of like California. The plants take up quickly what they need, and then they store it in the leaves because they know this is their, their environment, that they're, they're going to have to rely on this to nourish and feed the plant. So all of these succulents, the jades, are known for that as well. Good point about um, succulents and propagating. If you really want to propagate jades or most succulents, all you have to do is break off the stem, let it dry for like two or three days. What it's doing when it's healing, it's uh, forming a callus. So the stem actually, is if this, if this were your succulent, three or four days later would sort of heal over and then you can just put it right into the soil. If you did this without letting it dry out, it probably would have a less chance of living because it's an open wound and then you have all the bacteria in the soil that's taking it up. So I always recommend succulents, whatever you're doing in succulents, um, uh, aloes, let, let them dry out for a couple days. Take a pencil, make a hole with a pencil, put the plant in and then just push the soil around it. 99% of the time, all of your succulents will live if you do that. You don't really need rooting hormone. If, but if you're trying to should say propagate this pittosporum, which is a different a whole ball of wax together, but you can strip all the leaves off. Uh, you cut this, you want to keep this moist, so you just what you do is you take all this off. I don't bring my pruners with me, but anyway, you cut this, strip the leaves off because they're going to drop off anyway. Then you take um, rooting hormone, which is kind of uh, dusted in sulfur, it keeps the bacteria down and it also has hormones that the plant needs. And you dip this in water, and then you dip it in the powder, and then you take your pencil, like I was showing you, put a hole in the soil, put this in the soil, pack the soil around it. Generally, most hardwood plants will take, but you may need to do quite a few of them if you're trying to propagate more pittosporum, okay? But you would take all of this off, because it's all gonna lose anyway. So you just would cut it again here, and make sure that you don't propagate the plant upside down because it won't grow. <laughs> Trust me, I've done that. Because once the leaves are off, you don't know which end is up, usually. But if you look carefully, you can be able to see that the, the, the scars from that are pointing downward. Most of us may not know that, but you want to make sure that all of your plants, when you propagate, are in the same direction. There was your little botany lesson there. Um, any questions? Yes. First of all, it looks really nice. Thank you. And it looks so easy from this side. It looks nice from this side. Um, I have a couple of questions, Mike. Okay. Euphorbia sometimes is orange and red. What makes the sunlight? Sun. sun. I had one, a very huge one in the shade, and it was all green. And then I moved it to the sun because a client wanted to buy it. it was, it's like an eight foot euphorbia. And I moved it into the sun, and it is now. There's one over there. Yeah, I noticed pretty that. Orange. Yeah. It's all almost all orange. Yeah. Now, there are two different cultivars, too. Some of them get yellow, some of them get really orange-red. So that's why they get the name Six on Fire. This one here is sort of pinkish-orange. If you move that into the sunlight, mm -hmm. it would change a lot more. What happens is the plant goes through um, a, a, a chemical change, like a lot of plants do, uh, similar to what a ficus would do. If you took a ficus from, say, full sun and you moved it into the shade, what happens, the leaves would probably drop off. And the new leaves would be much larger because now it's in the shade. It needs the plants go, okay, I have all this, you know, I have no sunlight anymore, so I need to produce a larger leaf so I can gather as much sunlight to produce sugars to, to make myself grow. So a lot of plants do this genetically. You know, they change colors, they change leaf size, they change in a lot of structures that we see that we like. Oh, I like this when it's orange. Some people happen to like it when it's more green. Mm -hmm. But I use ficus as an example, because if you can take a ficus from uh, full shade indoors and put it outside, it will drop every leaf, and the leaf that it replaces will be much smaller than the shade leaf, yeah. because it doesn't need all those giant surface area to absorb the sunlight. Okay. Interesting little thing about plants. Yeah. The other question I have is, uh, I have succulent and planted outside in my yard. And is it okay to water with a hose, or should it be irrigated from the root? 
Well, when it rains, that's one of the dilemmas. You know, if it's only a short, you know, burst of rain, then that's perfectly fine. What happens in rain or when you're watering above, you may be knocking off insects, which you may not know, aphids or mealybugs. So um, that's a good thing. Um, so I have a tendency to think the natural way to water is great, but when we do our design and we're more Um, when you do ground irrigation and we don't get rain for seven months, what happens, a lot of plants will get mealybugs, spider mites, because we don't have the rain to flush them out. So it's probably a good idea once in a while to take the hose, hose your plants down because they look better when they're all the dirt from the air we breathe is off the plants. And you're also removing a lot of the spider mites, aphids and mealybugs that you may not even see. So maybe the, uh, the idea is to maybe once a month just hose everything down anyway. And you might be taking getting rid of those insects that you don't see or you do see. Mm -hmm. But I would say drip irrigation is fine. Um, you know, if you're watering them once a month, once every couple of weeks, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But what is a big deal is some of the succulents need really good drainage. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting them in clay soils, chances are, you know, clay is going to hold a lot of water and when it dries out, it cracks. Mm -hmm. So when it cracks, the roots that have grown into that break apart as well. So you end up with a plant that now has smaller roots because they've broken off in the cracked clay. And also, if they've been in wet soil, clay soil, for a period of time, they have too much water at the roots and they can get bacteria and start rotting up. So mm -hmm. it's always a good idea to mix your soil in pots or in the ground with cactus mix. Okay. It has perlite, it has sand in it, yeah. and I use it on everything anyway. Mm -hmm. I just use it on roses, if I'm doing roses, or succulents, or cactus, or any perennials. I just use the cactus mix, because yeah. our soils are typically clay anyway. Yeah. And it does have enough peat, and uh, that it will retain a little bit of moisture. Yeah. I, when I planted it, I put uh, bark around the cactus, and I realized that it, uh, it got uh, mold. Yeah. At the base of the thing. Yeah. Good. I, that's a good question. I mean, a good uh, uh, point there. Keep the mulch away from the base of your succulents. Yeah. I removed it and put gravel instead. Gravel's fine. I mean, it's it's uh, basically the, the the well, particularly around spiny succulents, cactus, things that are thorny. You don't want to have to go pulling weeds around a garden that's full of those agaves. I mean, I did that once. Uh, it, Funny, not a funny story, but one of my first jobs ever was at this place in Fort Lauderdale called Flamingo Gardens. And it was like, I went out of a horticultural school, I had to go and they put me on this weeding, you know, a bunch of us went weeding and they were, you're going to the encephalardis and the agaves and all that. And I'm like, okay, fine. But this one encephalardis, it sounds like a disease, doesn't it? It sounds horrible. I've got a really bad encephalardis. <laughs> But these have the, the nastiest thorns, and I don't know what would ever think about even biting or eating this plant. But we had to go in because when they planted these, they did not put weed block or any kind of surface area to, to keep the weeds down. And for years, it just kept growing with weeds. So make sure you use a weed block or gravel or mulch or rocks or something of that sort. Because when it's windy, the seeds end up blowing into those little places. You always wonder, how do weeds get in the crack of the side of the house here? Well, they just end up there, and then you need a little water, a little sunlight, and there you are. Yeah. So that was a tangent to answer your question. <laughs> but yeah, you want to definitely keep the mulch away. And